So we're moving along pretty well, and before I go into, oh, there's so many cool things I want to show you, but I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Well, not slow it down, but I want to bring in some functionality earlier than I normally do, because it can actually be used uh, in some of the things later on we're going to do, like masking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know what, let's uh, go in here, and I'm going to go right across this neck here. Let's go into our stroke menu. I'm going to make sure Lazy Mouse is on. I'm going to crank this Lazy Radius up. And you know what, let's crank up this uh, Z intensity a little bit on our standard brush. I'm just going to go across the neck here. So I'm going to put a little dividing line around the neck. It kind of looks like he's got a head that's going to be skin, and then he's going to have a bodysuit, uh, which could have some different materials. In fact, let's go ahead and do a couple different materials. Let's just kind of swing this around here. And we'll use these as kind of seam lines, because what we're going to talk about next is materials and poly paint. We'll start with materials, so I'm going to go in here, and we've touched on this a little bit too. We have, we know there's a material palette over here. We've actually gone in here and we switched out materials to like Skin Shader 4, and that's gone and updated our material we have here. In fact, if you go in here and you hover over any of these materials, you get a little preview of that character, and that's because we have preview material on Mesh. If it's slowing you down or you don't want that for some reason, you can turn that off, and then when you go in here, you'll just see a preview on a sphere, but we'll go ahead and turn that back on. Now we're not going to cover every single material in here, but we will talk about the difference between, um, well, quick pick up here is just materials that you've used recently. So if we go over here and we say, okay, Matcap Skeleton, and we choose that, you'll see it hops right up here in our quick pick area. Generally speaking, I kind of just sculpt with my startup material, which for you guys will be the Matcap Gray. And to save a startup material, you can go in here to the material, say, save as startup material, and it'll tell you, okay, every time you set up ZBrush, that'll be the default material assigned. The default material when you first start ZBrush is matte cap red wax. And all the ones we're choosing right now are matte cap materials. Now down here we're going to have standard materials. So the difference between high level, the difference between matte cap materials and standard materials is essentially matte cap materials have the material lighting information and surface information baked into the material. Now you can make your own matte cap materials. You can even go into Photoshop and paint your own matte cap materials. Essentially you paint lighting onto a sphere, and then bring it in as an, as an image here. So if we go in here to say Matcap Gray, and let's scroll, let's go ahead and close these two menus out of here. We'll go into our material menu. We'll take that dot and just drag it over here. You're going to see underneath modifiers here, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see a little texture plugged in here. If I take this texture and I plug in something else, that's going to light my object essentially. So choose an eyeball, it's going to be that kind of lighting. So again, you can use a texture, and there's also a thing called, underneath the lighting menu, let's move this over so we can see, light, light cap, where you can go through and create your own matte caps. I'm not going to get into that just now. I just want you to be aware that you can go through here, and what's driving this is essentially an image that's either been imported or created in ZBrush. So there's some really cool options in here. Again, generally speaking, I'm going to stick with Matcap Gray for just general sculpting. Some people like Green Metallic. Matcap Red Wax will really kind of enhance differences between your surfaces. If you're doing anything shiny, you can turn it to Chrome, and you can make sure, this is also another good one, while you're using H Polish to make sure your surfaces are nice and smooth. But going back to the startup material here, or Matcap Gray in your case, you're going to see uh, the lighting is just kind of very general, and that, again, that's being driven by the image. If I go down here to the standard materials down here, so let's say, let's just choose the basic material for now. That looks pretty similar, it's a nice gray color. However, there's something else you can change, and that's up here underneath the light menu. So I'm going to take the light menu, I'm going to dock it over here to the left. And just like in a rendering image, your lighting, your textures, and materials are all going to kind of work together. And in the case of your standard materials, the light right here is actually controllable. So we have a light turned on. We can take this little orange dot, and we can touch it and move it around, and you're going to see it's going to not only update the shader ball, but also update the lighting in your scene. This is very useful for determining, it's just like in your studio, if you're sculpting in clay, and you want to determine like if your forms are reading correctly, you can go in here and you can change your lighting. In fact, if you tap the dot, it's going to send that light around the back, and you can actually go through here, you can do like lighting from the back. So a little bit of rim lighting going on there. Of course, you can tap that again and bring that light around to the front. 
And again, just kind of position your light in a generally comfortable position. However, if we go from our standard material back to matte cap gray, and we move this light around, you're going to see nothing's going to happen. Because again, that lighting is baked into that texture. This is what's controlling the lighting, quote unquote, on your object. It's not actually being controlled by these lights. Now, that's not to say these lights don't do anything. Um, if we move the light over here to the right hand side and we hit this BPR button, we're jumping ahead a little bit, uh, you're going to see the shadows coming, or the lights coming from this direction. It's casting a shadow over here. And then again, if I move the light over to this side, rerun BPR, now the shadow's on this side. So it will affect your render, it's just not going to affect the real time lighting of your object. So that's the huge difference between MacUp materials and standard materials. One has real-time lighting capabilities, and the other one has lighting baked in. Now, when we choose MacCap Gray, and we go back down here to the material settings, just like when we had a primitive selected versus a polymesh 3D, when you went down here to the initialize options, you had two different menus. Same thing with materials. When you have a matte cap selected, your modifiers are going to be very different. And here you're going to have like an intensity A and B, so if you crank up intensity A, that'll lighten your overall material. Intensity B is not going to do anything because it needs to actually have a B texture. If we go back down here to matte cap red wax, you're going to see on this texture here, it has two spheres, so now intensity A and intensity B actually do something, so you can kind of go through here and adjust these intensities. In the case of matte cap gray, intensity B isn't going to do anything because it only has one image. But intensity A, we'll go ahead and lighten it up. And if you want to change the lighting, or at least the light direction on your shader ball here, you can go down, to, down here to orientation. And you can actually just kind of move this around. And as you do, this is going to rotate your image, which is going to update the lighting on your material. So we're not going to dive deep into material settings for matte caps or go into the mixer or do our own light caps at this point. Those are some basic things that you can change with a matte cap material. Now if we switch from our matte cap material down here to our basic material again, you see a completely different menu. And there's some really interesting, powerful things you can do in here. We'll start up here at the top. So ambient is kind of an ambient light that's going to be affecting your material. If you want to make it look self-illuminated, you can just crank that up. But we can go ahead and just keep this right around 8. Diffuse is going to be the amount of color that shows through. Uh, if you crank this up to 100, or if you crank it down to 0, that's going to basically effectively turn off your diffuse. And then you can go in here to ambient and turn that down to 0. And your specular, turn that down to 0. And now you don't have very much information coming through at all. Of course, generally speaking, you, you want a little specular here so you can see your forms. You want your diffuse up. And of course, add a little bit of ambient so those dark areas can kind of be highlighted as well. So you can lighten the contrast in some of those darker areas. Now if you go in here to the diffuse curve, there's some really cool stuff you can do in here. Like you can get a cell shaded look if you go over here to uh, strength and crank that up. And then you can change the offset. And then you can change the focal shift over here to kind of over crank to the left and the right. But generally speaking, go ahead and turn that strength down to zero. The diffuse curve, I don't really play with too much unless I'm looking for a very specific type of look. Specular over here is pretty self-explanatory. You can crank it up and it'll make your surface shinier or less shiny, more matte. And if you click on the specular curve here, you can tighten up the specular and make it look more wet. So the tighter this is, the smaller the highlight is going to be, giving you a more of a wet appearance. And then of course the broader this is, kind of has a completely different sheen there. So you can kind of dial this in as needed for the surface you're working on. Reflectivity isn't going to do much unless you come down here to a texture, plug in a texture in here, and then when we crank up the reflectivity, it'll use that texture to drive how reflective that surface is. Generally speaking, unless I have some need a, unless I need something to be shiny, I'll just go ahead and leave that off. Metallicity isn't going to make much of a difference on a white object. However, if we take this color and we turn this red, and just to kind of explain this really quickly, we'll get more into poly painting in a bit, but we don't have our paintbrush turned on, or underneath poly paint here, we don't have colorize turned on. And that's important because that's going to allow us to go through here and change colors on the fly. 
So if I choose a red color over here and we have metallicity up to 100, you're going to see our specular inherits the underlying color, giving it a very metallic look. If we take that metallicity down to zero, you're going to see our specular turns white. So now it gives it more of a dielectric or a plastic look. Go ahead and put our color back to white. Now there's a lot more settings in here. Don't really use a lot of them to be honest, uh, but we'll talk about some common settings in here you might find interesting. Here's different types of specular. So zero is Fong, and if you want to change that to a, pl a blend, you can do that. And of course, you can go through here and adjust again that specular fall off. So again, here's blend, and then we can transition that to a Fong. And down here, you have diffuse spec, ambient, and cavity. Uh, if you change any of these now, like change the diffuse to red, it's not going to do anything. You'll have to come up here to colorize diffuse, and the more you turn that to the right, the more it'll start introducing a little bit of that red color. Same thing for spec. If you want to make your spec a little more blue, you can turn that a little cooler and then come over here to colorize specular. And then the more I crank this up, the more it'll have kind of a blue tinge to it. Same thing for ambient, same thing for cavity. And again, I don't generally mess around with these settings, but feel free uh, to play with those if you'd like. And we'll go ahead and keep specular at white. Now, there's other standard materials in here you can play around with. Basic material is very similar. It's basically the basic material with a few more different settings. You can also go in here and you can take a material, say steel, and you can copy that material. You can choose another material like colorize glow, and you can say paste material, and now you'll have steel over here and then a new steel over here. Now you have to be careful with this. If you do a lot of material swapping and changing of materials and then you only go up here to tool save as, you're not going to save any of your material settings. When you load up ZBrush, all your materials will be back to normal and nothing will have been saved on the material side. Like we talked about way at the beginning, the difference between tool and project and document stuff, you can go in here to save your document. You can load up a document, load up a tool, and then the associated materials will still be the same. Uh, but it might be safer just to go up here to File, Save As, and save a Z project. You just have to remember that if you have a bunch of stuff in here you don't really need, you can go through here and delete it. Like you can select the dog and just say Subtool Delete. And even faster, if we know we want to keep this guy around and everything else in here is kind of junk, there's a new macro. Let's go in here to our macros. There's delete unselected tools. You just hit that button, say OK, and now any other tools you don't really care about will go ahead and be deleted. And then it's safe to go in here to say file, save as, and you won't save a bunch of junk with your project. You can also hit the comma key, go into the material tab, and you'll see some extra materials in here, as well as if you want to bring in folders of other materials you might have, or if you want to save out a material with any settings that you've changed, just make sure that material is selected. Either go in here and say save or go into the material menu and hit save. You'll also see you have quick access to in the material menu lightbox materials. That'll just load the lightbox right to the materials area for you. Go ahead and hit comma to go ahead and shut down lightbox. And that's kind of the basics of materials.